Well, joining us now on Encounter, Father Roderick Von Hogan, who is author, podcaster, producer, a self-proclaimed geek. <laughs> Thank you so much for being with us, Father Roderick. Thanks for having me. Um, I, you're involved in new media, but I just wanted to talk to you about uh, when did this all begin? Uh, if you could take us back, when, when did you decide that this new media thing was something that you could work with and, and, and spread the faith? You know, I think it started actually when I was still a child, mm -hmm. when my mother used to tell us stories or read us fairy tales, and that just, just activated my imagination, and I always loved telling stories. And so we were using these old tape recorders, and we you'd have to <laughs> press two buttons, and then we'd, we'd pretend that we were doing radio. And I think much later when I, uh, when I, uh, was ordained or had just been ordained uh, that was when the, the moment when the internet started to to rise and to become much more kind of a thing that everybody had and that was when I thought you know this is this is the best tool in the world because I can reach anyone wherever I am and that's when all those old you know creative endeavors came back and I started to experiment with building websites and then we were able to record radio and 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 podcasts and and now we have YouTube and I think the moment it, it really started for for real was when um, when I was in the Vatican so I did my studies in, in Rome for okay, a while yeah. and I just been home for a couple of years or perhaps even one year and then we heard that Pope John Paul II got ill and I wanted to be there. I, I, that's my pope. I mean, the, the pope that I grew up with, and he was my hero. And so I wanted to be there to pray uh, on St. Peter's Square while he was ill and in his final moments. And that's when I started to record what I saw. And it was just audio. And, and I published it on the web, and it struck a chord with so many people because it was different from what you saw on TV. You know, you had CNN and all the big networks, and they were doing their little you know, one minute segments, but it was all kind of pre, pre prepared. Whereas I was just walking around and just interviewing and just sharing my impressions. And it was almost according to my listeners, like as if they were there with me. And so it was kind of that personalized way of doing media. And now with, with the, the, the rise of YouTube, that's kind of the big thing right now. Like, yeah. like you have like traditional stations and traditional media, and you've got that very personal, let me show you my world. Yeah. And that's been a fantastic way to touch people and to gradually kind of bring them closer to the church. Because I'm not just this, pre this preaching priest yeah. that you have to, that you can only understand if you know church Latin and you have a lot of, you know, theological knowledge. But I'm, I'm just a regular human being and I, I'm passionate about my faith and about my church and I just bring people in and show them around. And you touched on a couple of things, but tell us a little bit about all the things that you're doing. You do podcasts. I know you're involved with SQPN. Maybe if you could tell mm -hmm. the viewers a little bit about that as well. Yeah, so I started with podcasting, which is just audio. It's just like radio, but you distribute it through the internet. And I've been doing that for, for 10 years now. And uh, we build a network that we call the StarQuest Production Network, which was kind of like based on the idea of, of those magi that are following that star. And we we're like, yeah, that's kind of what you do in media. Yeah. You kind of, you're, you're traveling with people and you try to find Christ. And our programs are like, like little stars that reflect the light of God and hopefully are in attractive and interesting to people so that they start journeying. And then um, this year we're, we're we've moved to, to video because we felt like so many people are on YouTube, especially younger people, and we need to be there as well and bring them in, but with the, in the kind of that same, with that same attitude. And so we, we created um, uh, Tridio, which is kind of like the, the, the sequel to, to SQPN, and it's, it's a, again, it's a new platform so that people, young people especially, can find you know, new entry, entries to, to the gospel, to the church. And, it, and it's been a blast. That's yeah, great. And I know you're a huge Star Wars fan. And maybe if you could talk about that, too. We we're on to this new generation now with The Force Awakens and, and more, more to come. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, how do you, how do you find messages in pop culture and movies and things like that, and, and especially Star Wars. It all started with Star Wars. Yeah. I mean, my fascination for Star Wars was first just the fascination of any kid. Yeah. I love the lightsabers. I love the story of uh, this young boy, Luke Skywalker, who discovers that he has a vocation to go save the world. I mean, that, that resonated in me as a child. 
And then later on, I heard that George Lucas, when he created Star Wars, it, it wasn't just a science fiction story that he wanted to tell, but he wanted to tell a, almost a, a fairy tale that could convey certain values or transmit a certain spirituality. So he deliberately took you know, ideas from the Bible, from different religions. He tried to find the stuff that is kind of universal, that you find in so many cultures and so many religions, and just gave it a spin, which when I was a priest, uh, just entered, just opened up a whole new dimension of Star Wars, where all of a sudden you see, well, wait a minute, this is like Anakin Skywalker. He's kind of like Moses in the beginning. And then you have that fall from grace, which is turning to the dark side. It's basically sinning and, and forgetting your inner, your vocation and, and, and using whatever talent you have for your own egotistical motives. And then there's redemption, there's forgiveness. You know, Luke Skywalker, who sees his father, and, and says there's still good in him. Right. And in, in The Force Awakens, you see like a reflection of all those themes. And you have that same, like if there's a vocation story. There's this girl on this remote planet, but there's more to this girl, but she has a, she has a calling. And who knows what will happen? And she opens up to the Force. It's like people opening up to, to God, right? Yeah. And then you have, we, we have the Holy Spirit that will guide us, that will actually make us do sometimes miracles. Just like in Star Wars, you have like, kind of a, is a metaphor of that, where the force, you can, you can use it to levitate things. And, and it's that same thing. It all depends of, uh, uh, on, on our choices. And so for me, Star Wars is, is, a, is a great um, language to reach all those Star Wars fans and tell them, well, you know what? That story that you love so much, Here's where, where George Lucas got it. Here's where he did his shopping, you know. Just read that Bible. And then these biblical stories will make your experience of Star Wars so much more rich. Yeah. And, and that's, that's kind of how I try to evangelize. That's great. And, and I know you're involved in all, so many things. And you have a book as well. Um, where can people find out more about uh, all that you're doing and, and SQPN as well? Well, they can follow us uh, on, on the... Tridio, that's the new platform, that's, yeah. that's Tridio.com, so it's like video, but then it's Tridio. Sure. Um, and they can follow me personally on, on uh, Twitter and on Facebook. Just look for Father Roderick, and well, usually that generates quite a few <laughs> hits, so you'll be able to find me. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being with us, Father Roderick. My pleasure.